Cincinnati's back in the orange and black. See the natty on the map, baby, tell me where you at. In the jungle, who they bringing it back to the jungle? It's a game day. Yeah, the jungle's back. Got the natty pack in the orange and black. Welcome, everybody, to the Cincinnati Bengals Weekly Show, the fifth year me and Joe Kelly have done this. Joe's not with us tonight because he's going to go watch the Washington Huskies play East Wa- Eastern Washington on Saturday. I am your host, Mike Goodpaster, and right now I want to welcome in my co-host, Matt Minnick. How you doing, Matt? I'm good, Mike. How are you? All right, and I want to tell everybody we are sponsored, as always, by BetNow.eu. You can go there to BetNow.eu. And put in a promo code TRUTH50 to get a 50% cash back bonus on your first deposit up to $1,000. All right, this is our fifth year with the Bengals Weekly Show. And only one of those years was worth a crap. So we're hoping for better <laughs> this year. Um, and we got a new coach, so we can't bitch about you know, Marvin anymore. We've got Zach Taylor. What's your overall feel for this team so far, Matt? Uh, I mean, it, it, it's a mixed bag. I was definitely hoping to see more positives in the preseason, uh, you know. But but here and there, I mean, it, it looks like the the competition's a little better. They're, uh, they're they're not holding out on veterans. They're playing some young guys and 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 rookies who weren't even drafted high or at all. Uh, you know, so it's a it's a positive that they're not just clinging on to guys just because they drafted them high or they've been here the longest. Uh, but I mean, all in all, it, it, it's been a rough performance, uh, you know, every week of the preseason so far. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm apprehensive about what's going to happen when we, when we go into Seattle. Yeah. And when you look at this, we'll start off with the positives. I think there's been some bright spots, especially behind the offensive line, maybe not the offensive line, but Andy Dalton <laughs> looks to be getting more and more accustomed to the game plan. Um, I think he's looked good so far, and Ryan Finley, as you said, he doesn't look pretty, but he gets the job done. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a good sign about the offense. That whoever's in there uh, seems to be doing a pretty good job. Um, you know, I think Finley, uh, I'd be surprised if he's not the number two guy. I'm thinking, uh, you know, they're probably going to end up moving on from uh, uh, from from Driscoll. Uh, and, uh, you know, undrafted, uh, Jake, Jake to Legala, uh, you know, looking, looking good in there when he got some action last week too. So, um, you know, I guess having what three, right, four quarterbacks coaches, uh, with the assistant guy, uh, you know, I guess that's, that's helping them out. Yeah. And I think the bright spots so far that have been surprises are probably Auden Tate and Damian Willis. Yeah, uh, you know, definitely saw some good development out of them. I think uh, the receiver position was something that everybody wanted to see addressed in the off season, and all they did was pick up a couple of rookie free agents, uh, and it, it ended up being uh, Damian Willis, not even not even the rookie free agent that people were expecting a lot out of, uh, who's who's really shined, uh, and he does some ridiculous things, uh, he just uh, absurd ability to make contested catches. Uh, so he's, he's definitely, he's doing what you got to do as an undrafted guy coming in. He's going out there and he's, he's showing up on film. He's making plays every single week. And with the running backs, Joe Mixon will play against Seattle. Do you think that that is a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it's, it's a good thing to have him. I don't know if it's a good thing for him uh, with the way this line has been run blocking uh, so far in the preseason. Uh, definitely. Uh, definitely some some concerns. Uh, his, his former teammate Oklahoma uh, Anderson had a uh, led the team in rushing with seven yards on eight carries last week. Yeah, but that's almost um, a yard a carry. <laughs> almost, yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah, and that I think I think Rodney Anderson is a really good running back. Giovanni Bernard we know is Quentin Flowers is solid. Jordan Ellis is all right. The thing that stands out to me here is the offensive line, and the offensive line is a mess, Matt. Yeah, I mean, that's another area. They they did do one big thing to address that uh, with the first-round pick, and they're not going to see anything from that this year, it looks like. So, um, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's in rough shape. They're, you're, they really haven't done uh, anything to, to address it uh, in a major way. Uh, now, uh, Michael Jordan... Uh, day three pick is going to be starting a guard. 
which is, you know, again, it's one of those positive things that he's a guy who's a late round pick. He's definitely been, uh, been looking good in these preseason games. Yeah. But is that because uh, he so, looks good or because everybody was here was so crappy before? A little, a little from column A, a little from column B, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not, it's, it, it's not, uh, you know, it's not the same old, it's not just playing the guy that's been there anyway. So, uh, so that's positive. We'll, we'll see what, what Jim Turner's made of and what he can get out of these guys. Yeah, and with this team, I, I just don't see the talent at offensive line to really fix this here either because Trey Hopkins, if he's the guy you're going to, there's issues, and that means there's no depth. You get a couple of injuries here, it's really bad. And Michael Jordan's a guy I'd rather see play guard and play center just from watching his Ohio State film. Yeah, you know, a few years ago, Clint Bowling was the third best player uh, player on the offensive line. Uh, he became the first best player overnight, uh, not from getting better, but from the from the Bengals letting uh, letting their guys go. Uh, and now, you know, he was still the best player, uh, and still not as good as as Zeitler and Whitworth. Uh, and you know, because of uh, uh, because of the neglect of the position, he was he was the best, and now he's gone too. Uh, yeah. you know, they brought in Jonah Williams, who could have been the could have been the best. He's not going to be here this year, uh, so yeah, they're. I mean, they they are they are hurting at that spot, and they haven't really done anything to help themselves out. So, what do you look for in the fourth preseason game? I'm sure nobody that really matters that much is going to play, but is there anything here that you would have people look at if you wanted to take a key away from anything? Um, you know, I I think there's probably going to be some some special teams uh, battles figured out, and I, I think that those are to be. Those, you know, those could be the deciding factors on, on who the last few guys to make the roster are. Uh, definitely interesting to see what's going to happen at receiver with uh, with AJ being out uh, at the moment, uh, likely to keep seven. And I think that uh, you know we know it's going to be AJ, we know it's going to be Ross, Boyd, Erickson, uh, Willis because they already announced he's starting, uh, and I'd say Tate is is, is the sixth guy. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see who gets that final spot, you know, uh, with Josh Malone, who hasn't really done much on special teams, uh, Cody core, who's, who's been a guy that they've, you know, championed on special team, uh, and, uh, and, and other undrafted rookie in Stanley Morgan jr. Uh, I think those guys will be battling out for, for that last spot. Uh, and I see it deep at the back, there'd be some interesting things as well. But a lot of young guys in there. Uh, we haven't seen much out of Dave, uh, from Devonte Harris, Jordan Brown, you know, those guys competing against veterans like uh, Tony McRae, uh, uh, Kavari Russell, uh, you know, so figuring out who those last few guys are going to be uh, for those spots. And you know, same thing at linebacker. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see a lot of competition there from who's, who's getting those special teams reps and also who's, um, you know, standing out and making the plays on the offense and defense. All right. Now, when you look at the defensive side of the ball, the Bengals were not stellar last year, to say the least. What do you think so far about looking at the defense? I definitely see some improvements. Uh, you know, it, it, again, it's, it's tough to tell because uh, you never know who's who's in all the time, and you don't know who they're playing against all the time. Uh, just with the way different coaches look at uh, look at the uh, the preseason, but um, they, they they're going to have a pretty good pass rush, I believe. You know, especially if Lawson can stay healthy and they and they use him a little bit more. Uh, you know, having lost in there's going to be huge. Uh, I think we've seen some good things out of both Andrew Brown uh, and, and Wynn uh, is, you know, kind of, you know, not a new guy in Brown, but, you know, second year guy and, and, and when they're uh, stepping up, I uh, expect a little bit more out of Hubbard now that he's going to be really just playing on the edge uh, and, and not experimenting with him inside as much as they did last year. So they've got a pretty nice little rotation there. Uh, if they can keep all, all those guys going on the pass rush, uh, and the defensive backfield, um, you know, we're, we've got uh, we've still got three first round picks there, uh, so it's about seeing those guys and you know if they can go at their peak. I think Webb was a good addition uh, at, at safety as well, or sorry, at a, a corner as well in there, uh, and then the young uh, Darius Phillips uh, competing. He's done some really good things in special teams, or excuse me, he really uh, did some really good things 
this preseason. Uh, so that yeah, defensive backfield, uh, you know, could look pretty good as well. Uh, linebacker, you know, they, again, they didn't, they didn't really do too much there. Um, Pratt has had some flashes, not come on quite as quickly as, as I hoped he would, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, with getting him in there, but athletic overall at that position is still, uh, still definitely an issue. All right. Um, we actually are in the process of adding a caller. Hello. Hey, I want to introduce What's probably the on? greatest wrestling coach in the history of Cincinnati High School Wrestling, Ty Robbins. How you doing, Ty? I'm doing great. How are you? We're live right away. Joe couldn't make it because he's headed to the Washington okay. Huskies game. So I was going to add you anyways, but we All didn't right. know the last minute we were doing it. But we were just talking about the Bengals defense. I know you've been down to watch all the games. What's your take on the Bengals' defense, Ty? Um, I think the 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 line is pretty tough. I think the we're going to have a good rotation this year, so I'm excited about that. I think Lawson coming out, if he doesn't get injured, it's going to be a factor. I think that Hubbard's going to be a factor. I think they can rotate guys around on the line, put pressure. I think our corners are going to be tough, and our safety will be – our corners will be decent. Jackson's pretty tough. Bates I like a lot. Um, Williams um, hasn't played great in the preseason, and Dre hasn't been out there at all. I think our huge weakness is our linebackers. I'm still not sold. You know, I thought Pratt really hasn't done too much, so um, he's still out on the bubble. But I think – we got to figure out a way to uh, stop these these chunk plays from the tight ends coming out or the you know the running backs coming out of the backfield getting five six ten yards a pop. So that's my take on it. Yeah, and Matt, um, when you've got a really good front four or a defensive line and you're good on the backside, that's kind of what you got to worry about is being able to cover the running backs, and that's my biggest worry with the Bengals defense also. Yeah, uh, you know, again, it comes down to just not having a lot of speed at the linebacker position. Um, you know, and, and and getting the ball to the running backs kind of, you know, it's, it's a very popular thing in the NFL right now. That you know, everybody's looking for running backs that can do everything, that can play every down. Uh, so you know, it's definitely going to be an issue. Um, and I think tight ends too. Uh, it, we we saw in the preseason. Uh, I've been a Sean Williams guy in the past. I know not everybody's a a, a big fan, but uh, I mean, I think he's done some, some good things, but man, can he not cover a tight end? Uh, And then they they put him in some man situations on, on, on Kelsey in particular is what I'm thinking of, but definitely saw it more than once in the preseason uh, where he, he just does not look good covering, uh, covering a tight end. Uh, So uh, definitely have more worries about that than about, uh, about receivers. All right, so you guys want to go ahead and look at the AFC North a little bit because next week we'll be breaking down the first game of the season between the Bengals and the Seahawks. Ty, are the Cleveland Browns for real? Um, that's a good question. It's a good question. I, you know, we're gonna have to see them in game situation. I think they're loaded. I, I don't think you can. You know, Dorsey's done a great job of getting the personnel out there. You know. Uh, Getting the the receivers and you know Baker on on and Odell and all those guys, so we'll see. Uh, you know, I've coached a lot of teams, and my toughest teams are my have been my best teams. You know, uh, we'll see if you can keep all these guys in line. You know, I just wonder if uh, you know Baker gets into it with Odell. If Odell doesn't get enough passes. Uh, will that have start conflict in the locker room? So it'll be interesting to see how the season goes, you know, how they how they do and how they perform. The thing that worries me the most about the Browns, Matt, it doesn't worry me because I don't like the Browns, but <laughs> the thing that gives me hope here <laughs> is the fact that I think they're going to root a day they gave up Kevin Zeitler to get Odell Beckham because I think the offensive line is a huge issue with the Browns, and I think we saw it in the last preseason game. Yeah, I, you know, you know, I, I, when I look at it, it, this is kind of a crazy take, but I don't think, I, I think that the quarterback position is 
the only massive difference between uh, the Bengals and the Browns right now. Uh, you know, both not very good at linebacker, both not good at all on the offensive line, uh, have young, talented secondaries, good, you know, good young running back, a plethora of receivers, uh, including one guy that could be a top guy, AJ, a little bit past his prime compared to Odell. Uh, but, you know, still that, that, that potential, you know, real number one, true number one type of guy. Um, and, and both with some, some good young, you know, pass rushers. Um, you know, but Baker's Baker's the deal. Uh, so, yeah, you know, how much is that going to hurt them? I also think, and, and, and you just touched on it there, that um, the personalities uh, have – have potential to make this thing blow up in their faces. Yeah, he's got to uh, be and, more and of a Phil Jackson than a Bill Belichick. He's just got to kind of control yeah, the egos. It, exactly, and I think you know we'll 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 transition to the Steelers in a minute. But now that's one thing I have I have never thought that Mike Tomlin was much of a football coach when it came to to game management and X's and O's. Uh, but until recently. He has been very good at managing some difficult personalities on on, on that team. Uh, two of the three are now gone, uh, but uh, you know that's really what, what they're going to have to show in Cleveland. So you've got a rookie head coach uh, who was really just a you know interim guy calling plays. Uh, you know that you don't know much about. Uh, so I, I I think not enough has not enough attention has been you know, or shade has been thrown on on that hire. Uh, that is, that's a pretty risky hire for them and, and a guy that, you know, they're going to need a lot of to manage those personalities and, and just assuming that he's going to be able to win with that, that team. Uh, that's the big X factor for me is, is looking at what that coaching staff is going to be able to do. Yeah, uh, Cause at the end of the day, you know, they, they hired, they hired a guy Baker liked. like that's what they did, you know? And, and that's, that's not a that's not a way to run a franchise hiring the guy your quarterback likes. That's, that, that's, that's pretty much what they did. With, um, that's exactly what they did. With, they hired the guy that Eli and uh, Odell liked when they hired uh, McAdoo and, with the Giants, and that didn't work out for them. Um, it, so, yeah, it's, it, it's not, not a good situation there. Maybe they get lucky with it, though. All right, what about the Pittsburgh no, Steelers? Just... And go ahead. Go ahead. Where did, were you going to say something, Ty? Yeah, I was just going to go back to, like, Kitchens has his hand full with – you know, this unnecessary drama. That's one thing I'll say about the Bengals. It's been a quiet camp. Zach Taylor's done a good job of getting everybody on board, buying in, you know, trying to get the talent to where it needs to be. And then you read on the other hand with Cleveland, you know, Baker's talking about other quarterbacks. He's, he's, he's you know, drama in, the, in their camp and, you know, to the point where Kitchens is like, well, if anybody says anybody on this team says anything, you know, they're going to be fired right away. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's unnecessary drama that has to come to camp and hope doesn't follow you into the season. So, that's just one aspect. Y'all there? That I was looking at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the connection cut out for a second. I couldn't hear anything. Um Oh, okay. When we look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're a team that loses maybe the best running back and wide receiver in football, but I still think they could win this division. I think it makes them a better team, Matt. You know, I I think they're getting a little bit better on defense, uh, but overall, I you know, I, I think Ben is past his prime. He has put up some numbers in recent years, which confuses people because, uh, you know, because everybody's into fantasy football, but if you watch his film, he hasn't been very good in the last two years. Uh, so he's on the decline, and and he's got those same personality problems we talked to we talked about with Mayfield. Um, and, you know, and, and it seems like he's kind of running the show there. Tomlin's lost his grip on him. Um, I think that is a team that has some talent because they they have a very good front office. They've always drafted well. Um, you know, you look at. Uh, you look at one year, they, they, a couple of years ago, they took Watt in the first round. Uh, and then, and, and, uh, you know, I believe uh, I said at the time they took, uh, they took Juju, uh, James Conner and, and Josh Dobbs. And I believe I, I said at the time, uh, Pittsburgh has their next big, big three. Now I'm probably wrong. And <laughs> although the jury's still out a little bit on Josh Dobbs, but they got, they got, they got two dudes there. 
uh, they were able to step up for them. Um, but I think, you know, that is something that's a house of cards. You know, they, they really could, could just crumble, even though they've got the talent, uh, be just kind of based on, on leadership and, 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 you know, get things going there because I think Ben, uh, doesn't want to do it. Uh, and, and I think he's just kind of being, being grumpy Ben and, and probably undermining what Tomlin's trying to do uh, from the outside uh, looking and this what that's what it has appeared to be over the last uh, year or two. Um, and I mean, that's, that, that's a dangerous game they're playing. Yeah. Um, Ty, I know you're a big Steeler backer. What do you think about the Steelers this year? <laughs> yeah, right. I, I agree a lot with what Matt's saying. I think, Ben, uh, the Steelers are going to be better off without the two all-stars. You know, if you just watch Hard Knocks, you see all the drama that's going on with uh, A.B. there, and then you don't have – he, he and Burford are boys now, though. Yeah, I saw the yeah. hug. That was so <laughs> sweet. I thought they would play more up on that. You know, they haven't so far. But yeah, I thought we haven't they would even seen perfect on Hard Knocks hardly at all, Ty. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. So who knows if he's in the doghouse already? Who, who, who really knows? But you know, I agree a lot with what Matt said. I think Ben's on the downside of his career. He doesn't have to deal with the drama, or at least he's the king dog in the in the locker room. So I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really watched a lot of the Steelers preseason um, to really give a, a, a great opinion. But I agree with with uh, what Matt's saying on uh, the Steelers. And we'll see. I mean, they're still tough, and they got rid of all that drama so they can focus more. But I don't know. It's uh, it's going to be interesting. All right, so the big question here is the Baltimore Ravens. I think the defense is going to take a step back, but they're still going to be better than most, Matt. I think the question here is, can Lamar Jackson get this done? That's it. You know, can, can Lamar Jackson do it? So, um, you know, I'm a – I'm a Lamar Jackson guy. You know, I liked him coming out. Uh, I, obviously, there's some there's some issues there, uh, but I think he compares a lot, uh, you know, to, to Cam Newton. You know, Cam Newton's accuracy isn't great, but he's got a big arm, uh, and he can make some plays with his feet and, you know, uh, keep alive in the backfield in order to do that. There's a huge so, size uh, difference between the two, Matt, though. There there absolutely is. So, we, you know, when you come into – you know, when you think about injuries and things along those lines and uh, actually running the ball, there's a difference. But I don't even think it's really about running the ball. I think, you know, the big thing uh, with quarterbacks is their ability to, to create. You know, and it, and it goes back to uh, to Bill Walsh. That was Bill Walsh's big thing. Even he used to talk about the way that he thought Montana could create. Uh, you know, so it's amazing what, you know, what would what would Bill Walsh do with today's quarterbacks? Um, you know, and, and you know, got a, got a little bit of a chance with, with Young, but that was mostly uh, mostly Seifert there. But um, yeah, so you know, what is he going to be able to do? Is he going to be able to run that thing? They've got a, a lot of uh, young receivers there, uh, who I think are a little bit more appropriate for him. There's there's speed guys that uh, you know, uh, Brown uh, from one of the rookie, you know, guys that that he can hang up a ball a little bit. They can go out and save him on. Um, I think. Probably an unpopular take here. I I love Patrick Mahomes. I was a I called him the number one quarterback in that class. But his deep ball accuracy isn't great. He's got some fast receivers that can run under the ball. Yeah. Uh, you know they can they can track the ball and save him on some of those things. Uh, you know Lamar's going to need going to need that too. And and and, and again that's that's a get away from Mahomes. I'm just saying he's not he's not the uh, the perfect quarterback that he's made out to be sometimes. Um, and so, you know, Lamar is going to have to, you know, get some of that help as well. Uh, but they are putting some young talent around him from the receiver position. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I just lost his name. Uh, uh, Andrews uh, at, at, at tight end. Yeah. Uh, they brought in Ingram, but I really like Justin Hill out of Oklahoma State. He's a dual threat guy at running back. Uh, so defense may be taking a step back. I, I still think they're going to be very good. Uh, and they've still got a very good defensive coach, uh, but you know I think the offense could be could be exciting. Uh, but it all it all falls on Lamar. You know, can can he do it? Can he be consistent with it? Because uh, well, they've definitely they've definitely got a lot of potential to be a very interesting team this year. Yeah, and I think when you look at this tie with Baltimore, 
Uh, this is probably boom mm -hmm. or bust. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, you know, with Lamar, you you don't know if you know he's got a lot more development. You know, he likes to run the ball, but can he pass and be consistent with that? Use his receivers, and you know, when you compare him to Cam, you know, Cam would like to get out and run. He can be dangerous, but then you have you're more accessible to injuries. You know what I mean? And then if he gets hurt, can Robert Jackson and Rick Sorley get the job done? And it'll be interesting to see if they keep three quarterbacks because then it'll tell you whether they have faith in him or, you know, we're going to go out on the limb, we're going to make, make Lamar a man and really, you know. Well, don't you think uh, by letting Joe Flacco go that they pretty much made that comment? And they really they made it last year. Um, yeah, but, you know, that – they they saved on some salary cap money there, and they can develop him. And, and the people are excited. They're excited about to see, see Lamar do his thing. So we'll see. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with Matt. He has to he has to be able to pass. And and that's you know I, he's when I the times that I've watched him, he's either been on or he's been really off. So we'll yeah. see. So who do you like in this division, Ty? Hmm. Wow, this division's really tough. Um, um, yeah, because it's possible question. none of these teams are any good. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Probably. That's a, that's a, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure who's gonna. You know, if you look at all the hype and you look at the the Browns, everybody's got the Browns on paper, but until you go out and play a game, until you're in the trenches. You know, and, and you see what you got. I don't know. We'll see. If you look at talent wise, I'd have to go with the Browns. But I don't know. The Ravens and, and Pittsburgh, they've got good coaching and, and they got solid players. So, well, see, I, and I, I, think and I still those... root for my Bengals. Yeah, but you don't want to be an idiot. And no, I meant. Well, well, <laughs> no, but I mean, we're gonna. I think we're gonna be better than what people believe. Well, if, if 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 we use our our talent right, nobody gets injured. Last year we had a lot of injuries, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Yeah, when I look at this, if I had to bet money on this, Matt, I would just go with the Ravens because I think Harbaugh is by far the best coach in this division. Yeah, he definitely is. Uh, and yeah, he's one of the one of the top few uh, in the NFL. Uh, it, it's funny they talk about. There have been reports about how they're they're revolutionizing uh, NFL offense with what they're trying to do with Lamar Jackson. Uh, so you got you have Jim Harbaugh's brother, uh, and you got uh, Greg Knapp there, and you know they're revolutionizing football, but they're really just doing the same thing that that Harbaugh that the other Harbaugh was doing with uh, with Colin Kaepernick yeah. uh, years ago. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he he knows the stuff. He's a, he's a good coach. They've got good solid players. Um, I, I think that's the surest bet. Um, I think the Steelers still have a lot of talent, uh, although I wonder if Juju is as good as we think he is. You know, can he, can he be that guy without AB there? Uh, can he take over that number one role? Uh, but they have a lot of talent, and it's just, you know, managing those personalities. Uh, with Cleveland, it's managing personalities, and it's also managing expectations. Uh, I, I think – it's amazing. Like, if if the let's say the Bengals, you know, if the Bengals draft Tua next year, and then you know he gets in, you know, they have like a Browns kind of season where he gets in halfway through the year, and all of a sudden he's doing some really good things, and, and everybody's really excited about Tua. Like, are we going to be so insufferable that we're just gonna like think we're gonna win the division because we have we've had this guy for like eight games, and uh, and, and you know, like all of a sudden they find a quarterback. And they just think they're going to the the freaking Super Bowl. Um, it, it, it's absurd to me how quickly that fan base has found hope. Yeah, but uh, that's because of the <laughs> desperation. I mean, they've been worse than the Bengals have. I mean, everybody's won this division in the last twenty years except for Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, and that was that was the thing. That this time every year until until last year, we could sit here and go like, "Well, we're going to get two wins anyway." So. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm against the Browns. Don't get me wrong. I don't 
it's not that I don't see the talent. It's not that I don't see the potential. Uh, but I think coaching is a big question mark, and I think our expectations are too high for them uh, that they're just going to come over and take uh, come up and take this thing over. Right, um, it, it, if, if they do, it's going to be because Lamar Jackson screwed up and because uh, the, the the Steelers fell apart. All right, Matt. What about the Bengals? How many um, games did they win? You know, they won. People are. They're, going out there and saying they're winning two games or winning three games. They won three games last year in September. Um, and they didn't have really major losses, you know? Uh, so assuming this is a better coaching staff uh, and, you know, crossing our fingers that the injuries are better, although I think our depth is a little bit better right now too. Um, I don't see why they can't at least be a middle of the road team. Um, you know, so I, I had some high hopes early uh, based on what I've seen in the preseason, maybe six games. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's going to be a ton. Uh, you know, I, I don't think they're a serious uh, contender at the moment. Uh, but I don't think, you know, all the worst roster in the NFL, worst team in the NFL, number one overall pick talk, uh, I, don't, I don't see that. Well, my question is, Ty, when I look at the schedule, Seahawks, 49ers, Maybe you can beat the Bills. Steelers, maybe you can beat the Cardinals. Um, there's not a whole lot of games on here where I look at it and I have a lot of hope, though. Well, you know, I, I look at it like this. They had a lot of injuries last year. They're doing a lot of things that that Marvin would have never done. They're taking a lot of chances. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, last year, when you when you lose your top receivers – your top running backs, you know what I mean? And and a lot of people on defense, it's it's hard to win games. And when you are able to win games, uh, that's impressive. So I I think they win more than six. I like what he's uh, Zach Taylor is bringing into the locker room. So we'll see. But I do have a question for you and Matt. And my question is this as a fan. If, let's say, Dalton – doesn't have the season he wants and they decide they're going to bring Finley in and Finley has a pretty decent year. Do you think the Bengals, if they have a uh, losing record and they have, you know, they're up in the top in the draft, do you think they still go after a quarterback? How's Finley Or do you play? think they develop Finley? Are you talking yeah. Finley's average or Finley looks like Baker the last half of the season? But I, I like Finley. I'm, I'm saying. But if they can go 2-14 yeah. and 14 and get Tua, I would do that. Hmm. I, I mean, you got to figure you're only going to have so many chances at a quarterback, you know. Yeah. And, and and yeah, if if they if they go two and fourteen, and they're at the and they're at the top of the draft. Um, you know, Zach Taylor isn't going to go two and fourteen and get a, a chance at a quarterback again. You know, with this team, he, you know, hopefully he's not, hopefully he doesn't have the uh, you know twelve year contract or whatever <laughs> Martin Lewis had but, lifetime. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they gave him that, that Gruden contract, but um, see, I mean, you got to think about it in those terms too. Like, you better be confident. You know, if if you're there, you better be confident that Finley or Dalton's that guy. If you're gonna if you're gonna be taking a uh, an offensive tackle or something like that. Um, and really, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I'm I'm I I like Dalton. I think they can win some games with Dalton. I'm I'm not a move on from Dalton guy, but I'm always. Hey, if you there, if the dude is there, you take the dude. Yeah, kind of guy. Is, I you know, think two is the dude. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, if you got a chance at that guy, and you and you have a guy who's who's average to above average, you gotta you gotta you gotta take that swing. You, you gotta you gotta do it because that's gonna set you on the path. And my 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 point was this: if Finley, you know, and I'm and I'll, I'll get a chance to watch him again tomorrow night, but in the pocket, and, and granted. He hasn't, you know, been with the ones, but, you know, if, if he plays well, he has poise in the pocket, he makes great passes, and he turns out to be pretty good. And I think we win more in two games. I could be wrong, but I think we do. And you have an opportunity, and you go, okay, this is our guy. And I like Andy, too. I think Andy, you know, a lot of people, you know, when you, when you have – the line that moves around that's not very good won't protect them. We have no running game as far as last year. They couldn't they couldn't get it going because the line was so terrible. 
But let's say Ryan does do a good job, you know, and you you are high up in the draft. Do you still go for, you know, the quarterback, or do you take a number one linebacker? I because would because of this. We definitely need the linebacker. I would because of this, because I think Tua could be a really special player. I think Finley is going to be a good quality pro quarterback. Like I said, me and Matt talked about this before we went on air. He looks terrible, but he gets results. But if you want to win a Super Bowl someday, you're probably doing it quicker with Tua. Plus, you got to remember this. Next year, it's going to be like you would get a Tua in the first round, plus Jonah Williams. So you're going to get the best tackle in the draft. You're going to get, you know, if you're 2-14 and 14 or whatever, you get Tua. So right there, you just strengthen and – my thing is this. I, I don't think they're a 6-1 team because when you get injuries, almost nobody goes through a year without the offensive line getting injured. This line's not very good now. You get a couple injuries, and it's going to get really bad. And I don't think the 2-14 and 14 is because they don't have skill position players. I think the 2-14 and 14 is because they don't have a front office that has been able to successfully draft offensive linemen for the last 5 to 10 years. Yeah, we're you know we're being able to develop them as a coaching staff, and, and that's yeah. absolutely right. And I think that's the big thing too. You know, that, it, it's good to see see Michael Jordan playing because you can get guards on on day three that come in and start pretty quickly. You know, they're not quite this quick all all the time, but you know you can find those guys in the interior line, especially uh, on day three. And <laughs> when was the last time they did that? Russell Bodine. You know, you know I mean? Russell like, Bowden. Why re- would you bring wow. that name up? That oh. just brings us down. Oh, that one hurt, Matt. That one hurt. Came in, came in late and started. But, you, you know, so it's just a perfect example of what their decision-making and development has been at that position. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they definitely they, they need to do a better job with that. And, and you see how they, they don't address it and they neglect it. It's the same thing with the linebacker posi- uh, position. They put a Band-Aid on it for years. We go through Minter and Dansby and a bunch of other uh, guys who had been good five years previously, but, but you know, we're, we're one step away from retirement. Um, you know, you just can't neglect those things. And the, the, big, that, that's a, the big issue with the Bengals is they want to build through the draft, which is fine. You can do that if you are good at doing that. Um, and the Steelers have done that. But when you make mistakes, you have to you have to go on free agency and make up for those mistakes, and that's what they 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 don't do. Well, you, you know, can they say don't the use Steelers are good tool. at that, Matt. But how many times have they swung and missed on DBs over the last decade? DBs, yeah, it, it, I'm I'm with you on that. Um, and and as I said, I, I I like the way the Steelers draft. If it had been another franchise taking. Uh, Terrell Edmonds in the in the first round, I definitely would have suggested that they they looked on the board and thought Tremaine Edmonds was still there and, and ran the card up before they realized their mistake. Uh, but yeah, I, I you know they, they definitely need to they need to fix that and, and I think it's number one it's an evaluation but number two uh, it's a it's a developmental uh, you know issue there. All right, guys. So, everybody good for next Wednesday, then? Joe Kelly, former Cincinnati Bengal. I got to say this because he pays me every time I do. Former Cincinnati Bengals legend will be with us also. <laughs> with the legendary oh, hey, hey, fan, you, Ty hey, Robbins. Hey, you, you, hey, you know what? Right. I got to throw out one more thing. All so, right. the, neg- the negative to Tua is Bobby Hart will be, will be blocking his blind side. Uh, hopefully not by then. <laughs> yeah, because hopefully. Jonah Williams will be back then. We can put him at left tackle or right tackle, or we could just let Jonah Williams block every position, and it would probably be better than what we've got right now. Because I think this, I think it's possible that Michael Jordan is the best catcher in Cincinnati since Johnny Bench. Hmm. Because he doesn't go out and hit people, he catches them. That's why I didn't like him when they drafted him. So I, I think he's not very aggressive, and I think the problem with this line, they're not very aggressive. The thing is this. You give me five really aggressive guys on the offensive line, I can protect you. But if you give me five guys that are technically sound but soft, I can't protect you. Yeah, I mean, and you can, you can teach technique. You can't, uh, you know, you, you can't keep uh, 
can't necessarily teach the uh, the physical aspects of this you point. You can teach me. Life. All you got to do is meet my kids, and you'll see that you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, works. but when they're when they're when they're in their twenties and and they're and they're getting paid more than you are, you can't. <laughs> yeah, you can, because it's inherent in some kids to make them mean. Isn't that right, Ty? You've coached wrestling kids that were just That's right. mean. That's right. Yeah. You know, some of the best linemen were wrestlers. That's what I say. Yeah. That's what you he keeps telling you can, me. Uh, <laughs> you can teach. You can teach technique. You can't teach heart. Can't and I have to mean. say, Cedric, uh, what is a uh, way he was a. Uh, Worst lineman that I've ever seen play the game. So, and Jacksonville picked him up. I don't know if he's still with them, but that guy. Oof. Oh, you watch. They'll coach him up down there, and all of a sudden he'll be adequate. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm, I don't. <laughs> I doubt that. Yeah, I doubt that, too. I just figured I'd throw it in as a joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. I want to remind everybody, if you want to hear more football talk at 8 o'clock tonight, Cole Hanna will be back with the Indiana football podcast yeah there's an indiana hoosier football podcast so both of you indiana fans out there make sure you listen to it um at nine o'clock tonight myself and cfl legend robert drummond will be back with the cfl legend show and we will be back of course next wednesday night with cincinnati Bengals weekly to preview the Bengals season opener at seattle what could go wrong there Make sure you check out betnow.eu. You can click on the banner at the top of the page. Use the promo code TRUTH50 to get a 50% cash back bonus on your first deposit up to $1,000. So we're going to wrap it up for now. For Ty Robbins, Matt Minnick, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to the Ruling Truth, where the legends speak. <laughs>